feel that? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Uh, Coach, congrats on being one of the last two teams to play for the national championship. Can you just talk about uh, what, how it feels for your team? Yeah, we're excited. Obviously, um, been a great week. Uh, excited for the 12th man. Uh, looking forward to the number of Aggies that are going to roll in town here. Uh, it's always special and uh, super excited for our players. They've earned this opportunity. Um, as you know, we've been through a lot throughout the course of the year, as all teams have that have made it this far. And um, it's ready to play. Um, two, two off days is great, but we're ready to get back on the field. So looking forward to practice today. Thank you. For the uh, first part, let's just have questions for the student athletes. We'll do the first one here, then Eric, and then back. Hi, Travis Brown with the Bryan College Station Eagle. Uh, Ryan, how can you, uh, is, is there a way to measure what Max Wiener is, has meant for you uh, this season? And uh, kind of when you think back of how you're a different pitcher because of him, what are some of those indicators for you? Yeah, I mean, I think just the impact he's had on everybody is, it, it's night and day. I mean, to do it in, in one year and build trust with somebody, I think that's super important is, is how quickly you can, can have somebody trust you and build that relationship. And I felt like he was able to do that from, from day one. And I think that's truly what, what's helped us make some, make some steps forward is that there, there's a total buy-in from everybody down there in the bullpen. So uh, what he's done, I think he's just instilled confidence in guys. I mean, not that guys didn't have it before, but it's a new level of it. He's given you the, the, uh, the evidence and, and helped guys get better, whether it's stuff, but, but really the, the mentality side of it is he, he makes sure that everybody is confident in themselves over confident in their stuff. Eric. Hayden, uh, Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Uh, you know, you're, you're hurt uh, or a little bit. Uh, Jace has been hurt or hurting a little. Uh, Braden went out. Uh, I mean, you guys are pretty banged up right now. How have you guys navigated all of this given kind of the health issues that you've faced uh, for, for quite some time now? Yeah, I mean, if I'd say one word, I'd just say perseverance. I think it's also a testament to our guys that maybe haven't played a lot throughout the season. Um, you got it's just that next man up mentality. I mean, when you got guys like Caden Kent, Jack Bell, who who prepare the same way every day as if they're playing, that's how you have depth, and that's how you have a team that when guys do go down, you can have guys step up. So I think I think it's a testament to them. It's a testament to our our team as a whole and our mentality. But it's it's just awesome to see as a teammate to have that next man up mentality. For sure. Okay, we're back there, and we got here, here, and here. Ryan, when you look back at you know being in Omaha a couple years ago, not playing last year, you know bouncing back this, you know just kind of your journey. Just have you had time to reflect at all, and, and how does it feel to actually be here, one of the last two teams with you know the championship so close? Yeah, I mean, I think being back this time, I've been able to take it in a little bit more. I think enjoy it, and I think just the whole experience of it is a little bit better. Um, want a little bit more comfortable with it and, and this group of guys and everything. I, th I think we've just truly been able to take care of business and play baseball, but also enjoy it when we're, when we're off the field. And uh, to be one of, the, one of the last two here, it's super exciting. We're super grateful for it. I mean, we, we've put ourselves in this position and uh, just really excited to basically play a three-game series and try to be the first one to win two games. Ryan, kind of going off Travis's question, uh, you know, with Coach Wiener, I know there's a lot of talk about dominating the zone and that being a big focal point, but, you know, throwing strikes alone does not guarantee success, speaking from personal experience. What, uh, wh how would you kind of describe what he's able to talk to you guys about to, you know, not just throw strikes and you'll get positive results, but, you know, still be able to be effective while dominating the zone? Yeah, I mean... I think the first thing he obviously talks about is dominating the zone because you have, we have to be in the zone first to give us a chance. But other than that, I mean, every bullpen we do, it, it's not like a bullpen's a developmental bullpen. Everything we do is developmental, whether it's creating pitch shapes or, or cleaning something up. So I, I think it's because it's so simple and consistent throughout the year. We, we know what, what we want our pitches to do and what we want them to look like. and. And that's what we try to get them to every week. And then once we get that, it, it goes straight to, to being in the zone and, and just competing. Hayden, have you ever played through an injury like the one 
you are right now and, and just how difficult is it moving around, running, running the bases uh, for you in these games? Uh, no, I haven't, but also I think it's been overhyped a little bit. I, I mean, I'm fine. I like there's, I don't know. We have Jackson back there who's, who's way more banged up and has a way harder job than I do. Jace is pushing through something. I mean, at this point in the year, everyone's pretty banged up. It's just a matter of how bad you want to leave it on the field. And our, there's no one in our dugout that, that doesn't want to leave everything on the field. And that, that's the beauty of it. It's not, it's not just me by any means. Uh, Jackson Ray's Omo World Herald. Hayden, can you just talk about what it is about the Texas A&M program that just drew you here uh, to play here, and then also just what it means to you to you know help be a part of this team that made the final? Yeah, I mean, I I come from a I actually went to boarding school for high school, and it's all based on tradition and excellence and stuff like that. And when I met the coaching staff and kind of just learned more about A&M as a whole, the the student body and the people surrounding Texas A&M. That, that group of people is so powerful and, and they're so supportive. And I think that initially drew me in. Um, and it's been nothing short of amazing during my, during my tenure here. And then obviously you have the, the best coaching staff in the country, which, which helps out a little bit. So I think the mix of, of the people at A&M and this coaching staff, uh, that, that was the initial drawing. And then now having this group of guys that I get to come play for a championship with is, is pretty unbelievable. Travis Brown with Eagle. Hayden, uh, I know you tweeted about it last night. What does it mean to – how have you been able to balance watching your, your, your brother uh, <laughs> your, your brother in the, uh, uh, the, the trials and your family and, and how that, that's all going? Oh, uh, yeah, good. It, it's, I mean, watching him on NBC is pretty awesome, man. He's a stud, so super proud of him. <laughs> and just your, uh, uh, how your family negotiated coming here, going there, all that. Uh, uh, negoti- I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm, they split it up a little bit. Dad was here. Mom was there. Um, you know what? I hope that they can come this weekend. Um, he didn't win last night, so he'll have a chance to come this weekend, but yeah, hopefully he comes, gets to come watch. So any other questions for the players? Ryan. Guys, I asked this question of the, of the Tennessee guys too, but these are two of the programs you're like, I can't believe they've never won the college world series. There's so much history here. How much would it mean to each one of you to, pay that off for the people that came before you in the program yeah i mean one i think would mean a lot because everybody comes and joins this program because you want to win a championship you want to be the best you want to beat the best you want to play against the best so that that's why you come to a place like this and then i mean it it would mean a ton just the guys that played before us you see the support that they still bring back guys that were on the 22 team guys that were on the team even before that like they care like they really do care beyond their their tenure as a player here so i think just just to be able to do it for them give them a sense of accomplishment and then then also the fans that that are here that support us all throughout the year and excited to see what the 12th man brings this weekend yeah i mean you you said it best to do it for i mean i've only been here one year so i'm I'm not gonna act like i've been here for five years but to do it for this university with what i've been able to experience this year um would be I, I, life change. It, it makes me cry just thinking about it. So I, it'd be so awesome. And then obviously just to do it for this group of guys and this coaching staff would, would mean the world. Okay, last question for the players. Just Ryan, wondering uh, what you're taking from your start or what you learned from your start in the uh, SEC tournament against Tennessee and that lineup uh, going into tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, the start in the SEC t- tournament was a little shorter. I mean, that was kind of the plan going into it. But I think there's some familiarity with them. There, There's a little bit of... I don't know if a sense of comfort, but I mean, like, like been there, done that almost. Um, but also, we'll have a great game plan written up by the coaches and, and by our team. So uh, I, I think it's cool because done it against them before. But but also, we have to go out and execute this time, and uh, and just baseball will take care of baseball. Hayden Ryan, thank you very much for your time. You guys can go, and best of luck this weekend. Thank you. We'll open up. We got one, two, three. Okay. Is this on? Go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Uh, hey, Jim, Tom Chattel, what with the Omar World Herald. Um, you had a, <clears throat> a College World Series program at, at the uh, your previous stop. Um, 
Yeah. Is this why you came to A and M to uh, uh, be in the championship game? Uh, no. I mean, we were one game away from the championship game in 2016 at TCU. So uh, we were one game away in 2010. If it wouldn't have been for uh, Garrett Cole and Trevor Bauer, but um, I think we, you know, at TCU we were in, we were in the Final Four several. I mean, a couple times. So going, to, I didn't think of that going to A and M because I feel like TCU's great program my my choice to change to was a personal choice in my own personal life and even I'll say it again as I said it at that time I wasn't taking a better job I was taking a different job TCU's program was ahead of Texas A&M at the time in my opinion no disrespect to anybody else but um, it was just an opportunity I had spent 18 years at TCU uh, eight years at Tulane as an assistant so 26 of my However many years we're at private schools, and I just wanted the opportunity. If it, if it aligned perfectly, uh, I wanted the opportunity to attack a large state school um, with the way we did things, and and um, it happened to be at the right time. I think there, I think everything has a shelf life, and um, I love TCU. I truly love it. Um, I believe that school. Both of my children went to school there, so I don't. There's there was no negative. Uh, there was, I wasn't running away from anything. I was more just running to something that I, I wanted to try differently. Howard Borden, Omaha. Uh, Jim, uh, congratulations to you and Texas A&M uh, for competing for the national championship. Uh, we know the ballpark plays big. Everybody talks about the pitching uh, and the hitting. I really like the way the Aggies play defense. Just your thoughts on how big defense is going to be to get that crown uh, to uh, Bryant College Station. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think all phases of the game are important. Uh, pitching defense, timely hitting. If you get all three, you're going to win. If you get two of the three, you've got a great chance. Um, you know, outfield defense is incredibly important in this ballpark. Uh, we're banged up in the outfield. Um, so, And you saw... I mean, shoot, we had a chance to score 10 runs the other day if it wasn't for Michael Robertson. Is that it? right? The center fielder? I mean, he ran down, made some really nice plays out there on Teddy Burton and a couple other guys. So, yeah, the entire thing is important. I know Tennessee's played awesome defense. Um, I think anybody that's made it to this point has done that. But we've caught the baseball. We've pitched well. That's really been the recipe with some timely hits because, you know, we I think we've, we've hit one homer and it was by a freshman in, in this tournament. And... And the home run most of the season has been a big part of our offense. But it's an awesome part of you – know, it's why you have a great season. You can win games different ways. Ryan? Uh, Jim, same question I have for the guys. Uh, you love the history of the sport. It's amazing that A&M has never won this thing. So yep. what would it mean to finally be able to get over that hump for this program? Yeah, it would be awesome. I think, you know, 12th man deserves it so much. They've been so close and – Invested so much in athletics. Uh, you know, we all know the football stories. Uh, coach, coach Buzz has done an unbelievable job. Joni, our women's basketball coach, has incredible things moving forward. Trisha Ford in softball. We want to um, – we're doing great in women's golf. There's so many sports that are doing awesome at A&M. And, uh, yeah, it would be it would be really cool. It's, uh, I mean, I think we're the first team to be in the national title in any sport since the 30s maybe. Did I read that somewhere? Um, so that's even just that accomplishment's great too. But I, I just love the 12th man is just so special. If I start talking about it too much, I'll start crying because they really are a unique, special group of people that are so supportive, and be, it would be awesome to reward that. Eric Olson. Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Jim, uh, you know, when you uh, when you saw Braden get hurt there against uh, Oregon uh, on that play at the plate, uh, I guess, did your heart sink on that? And when you consider all the injuries that this team has had to play through, I know you had mentioned the next man up thing, uh, but as far as just the degree of difficulty of getting to this point, given what you guys have gone through on the medical issues. Yeah, my heart sank. Uh, everything sank um, in that moment, uh, mainly just for Braden. Uh, I forget. I think it was 17. We lost Luke and Baker uh, at TCU a couple weeks before the end of the season, and so we played without potentially our best player on that team at TCU. 
Um, it happened to us at, at Tulane in 2001. We lost our cleanup hitter at the end of the year and played to the and played to the College World Series on that team in Rosenblatt. So I've been through it before. Um, so I wasn't as concerned for our team uh, as I was just in the moment heartbroken for, for Braden and Shane Sedale. And even Jace to have to play, you know, not at full speed and and and, and shot. So uh, and Appel's banged up. So it's um, but yeah, you just hate it for them because you know, barring getting hit by a bus, you know, I'm probably going to have other seasons, and these guys don't. They have other seasons, maybe in professional baseball, but they only they have a limited number of seasons in college baseball. So you just hate it for them. I know you're not surprised at all to see Tennessee um, here. You've talked about you know the, them being you know one, one of the top teams all year, but um, just for a college baseball fan, how exciting is it to have this matchup? Tennessee, your lineup, their lineup, pitching staff, pitching you know just this matchup, Tennessee and Texas A&M. Yeah, it'd be awesome if we were if we were at full strength. That'd be really cool. Um, but uh, we're also playing well, you know, and I think we're pitching well. And Tennessee is, in my opinion, you know, we didn't. We didn't play, I I watch a lot of college baseball. Um, We didn't play Kentucky during the regular season, but we played them here. And I thought they had a great team. Uh, But Tennessee's far and away the best team I've seen, you know, outside of our team this year. Pitching defense, so physical, um, so well coached uh, by Tony and and Josh. You know, that's, that's, that Elander is captain of one of my, Teams at T- one of our teams at TCU that played in the Super Regional in 2012 at UCLA. So uh, it's hard, you know. I, I root for Josh um, every for every game except for this weekend. So uh, Coach Anderson's done awesome. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, it doesn't surprise me what Tony's done, um, and not just with his team, but with his entire program as a whole. So uh, yeah, looking forward to playing against playing against them, and that's what you get in our league, and that's obviously what you get in the World Series. Okay, we got two over here, then we got four over here. Perfect, gentlemen. Harrison Fan, SEC Unfiltered. Coach Loss, you've been a head coach for over 20 years and coaching long over 30 years now. What has been special about this group of guys and the staff around it this season as a whole and just the position you're in right now being two wins away from Texas A&M's first national championship in baseball? Yeah, um, I've said it many times, easily the most synergized, is that a word? Um, just to get, really have great culture among our coaches um, and including support staff, like so talented, energy, work ethic, loyalty, knowledge of the game. Like this is the best coaching staff that most complete coaching staff that I've been a part of and had some great ones um, at different schools. And then the players, um, I mean, pure talent, just pure draftable talent. It's the best team I've coached um, when you look at it from a draft standpoint. Uh, but I think, I mean, I've been a part of other teams that have elite energy and elite culture and elite synergy um, that just haven't, the ball has bounced a different way. Or a guy, you know, in, in 2016, we were one win away from this and we were playing awesome in Coastal Carolina, had to win three games and we had to win one and they did. In 2017, we were playing awesome, but a dude named Fiedo. Uh, shut us out, I think, both games. I think by the same score. So I was thinking about that when we were playing Florida. Uh, thankfully, he, Alex wasn't pitching. But uh, So, yeah, I mean, I think I've been a part of a lot of great teams. There's a lot of great teams that don't get to play for a national title just because baseball is baseball. And anybody who's ever been around baseball understands that. Okay, we go in the white over here. Then we'll, you're, you're next. Coach Peter Burnett from the uh, non here hearing Council Bluffs. The the pitching that you've had in this series has been has been phenomenal so far. Shut him down. Um, I'm wondering, especially for Ryan. You know, when he was when he was here in 22, a little bit of a rough outing against Oklahoma. Had a really strong outing. Obviously, no hitting, um, no hitting through. I think six innings. What what did you see from him in terms of his confidence building from getting that outing? Yeah, I think it, I think he needed that for himself. Um, he's a completely different. He's still the same guy, super intelligent. Uh, you, you've seen him, been around him, hardworking, uh, such a student of the game and all that stuff. But physically, he's just, you know, back then, <clears throat> that was the tail end, of his, tail end of his freshman year. He was out of gas. 
<clears throat> little did we know he was a couple weeks away from Tommy John surgery. We didn't, he wasn't hurting at the time, but I think he was headed that direction. It sounds like, um, so I'm just really glad he got to get back out on the field. And, um, I recruited him hard at TCU. <laughs> and I, I remember where I was standing, uh, on my back porch in Fort Worth when he told me he was going to A&M. So little did we know that what was coming, but um, I'm excited for Ryan, excited for his family. He's got a great family and great parents and um, hope he can replicate that against a really tough offense uh, tomorrow. Travis Brown with the Eagle. Uh, Coach, how do you uh, manage the, the pitching, the rotation this week? Uh, and, and what's kind of your, your thought process on how you get the arms out there? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, if I knew, I'd tell you. Um, without Sadeo, you know, we've had to get creative. Uh, we had to get creative in the first game with Lampkin. Um, when Sorrell hit the home run to make it 5 nothing, that made the decision to get him out a little easier because uh, in the game against uh, Florida because every pitch he threw, I was thinking that's one less pitch he might be able be as effective with in this upcoming weekend so we'll see how he feels we'll see how tomorrow goes we'll do everything we can within reason to give ourselves the best chance to win tomorrow and then see what happens on Sunday afternoon so uh the pressure uh, the pitchers the, the other pitchers are have been prepped over and over and over again that this is going to fall to more than just the three or four guys that have pitched uh to this point so it's going to take it's going to take a village uh, to get through the next three, uh, you know, two or three days. Okay, I'm going to try to get through a couple more questions. They've got obligations at noon, all the way in the back. Richard Zane, Tech Sags coach. I believe you said Ryan Prager is going to pitch tomorrow against Tennessee. Have, do you have a rotation for the rest of the week? And also, what is uh, Chase Lavalette's status after we saw him come out as a defensive replacement late on Wednesday? Yeah, Prager will pitch tomorrow. Uh, I don't have an idea who will pitch the other games. Um, and Jace, uh, he moved around pretty well yesterday. We didn't ask a lot of him. Uh, we'll see how today goes. Probably won't ask him to move much today. Just give him every opportunity to get healthy, uh, or bet better at least. Um, but I can't imagine him not playing the field. I mean, even at, even at the level he was at the other night, hopefully he'll be better than that. Um, and if he's not, then we'll have to make some adjustments either before, you know, or during the game. Okay, here. Coach, what does it mean for you and, and the rest of the coaching staff to give guys who you came here their first year and are only going to have one year with you, you know, uh, Hayden, obviously Braden, uh, Jackson, just to be able to kind of give them that opportunity to play for a national championship and not, you know, maybe like a bridge to something else, but actually, you know, make the most of it. Yeah, it means a lot because, you know, we uh, – had to convince those guys. We lost out on some other guys. Had a guy go to another school saying, hey, if I was in high school, I'd be coming to A&M, but I want a chance to win next year, so I'm going to go to somewhere else in our conference. And that was disappointing because I felt like, you know, even though we didn't – I mean, we did play to a regional final last year. We did play in the SEC tournament championship game, so it wasn't like they were coming to a JV program. But – um but yeah, it's just, you know, you're trying to break that stigma and, and join the club of teams that, you know, are, are on TV at the very, very end. And so those guys chose to stick with us, and, and it's awesome to be able to re reward their choice um, and just, just ecstatic to get to watch them play. You know, as I told them yesterday, this thing's all going to be over Tuesday morning, one way or the other. Either Monday morning or Tuesday morning, it's going to be over. So um, at least. You know, most teams don't know when their season's going to end. We're pretty sure when ours is going to end, one way or the other, and uh, and that's a gift. And we should be, you know, that's a blessing. We should be thankful for. Okay, coach. One more question, right here in the front. Jim, you obviously hired Tony back in the day at TCU. What were the things that drew you to him then, and, and what's it been like seeing the trajectory he's gone on as a head coach since then? Yeah, uh, at the time we were looking for a recruiting coordinator after. Um, let me think here. Uh, that was when Coach Maisie, I think, left uh, to go. No, I forget. So Maisie left after 2012. Yeah. So no, it wasn't Maisie. Yeah, it was Maisie. It... I was looking for a recruiting coordinator. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> They're all running together. He, Tony was with me 11, 12, 13. That's what it was. 
Todd Whitting got the job at the University of Houston after we went to Omaha in 2010 at TCU. And then we hired Tony. Tony was with me 11, 12, and 13. Um, he was well known as just the hardest working, laser focused recruiting guy in the country. Um, he did an awesome job uh, for us at TCU. Um, you know, all, most of the players on that 14, so we went on a run 14, 15, 16, 17, coming to Omaha. And a lot of the core players on that 14 team was were recruited by Tony. <clears throat> you know, he comes from a great family. His dad's just the greatest dude ever. Great high school coach. Uh, I remember used to always welcome uh, Coach Vitello, the father, uh, on our bus as we traveled throughout the course of the year. So it was great having him on the bus and having him around. I love great high school coaches. Um, and Tony, you could see his energy, you know, his passion, obviously super intense guy. And um, he came from a great family and he was around. I know, I know he thinks a lot of Coach Jameson at Missouri. And then he got to work for Dave Van Horn. Um, so he was fully prepared to go run his own program. And, and he's done a great job, obviously. Uh, and again, I think it's not when you go there and watch and experience a three-game series there. It's not just the baseball stuff. It's everything else that he's done a good job with, which I think is what the best coaches do. It's, it's game environment. It's the promoting your program and everything that um, Ron Frazier and Skip Bertman got going back in the day. I think that I think the best coaches do all of that, and Tony's done a great job of that. Coach, thank you very much for your time, and best of luck this weekend. You got it.